the Tunisian spiral that actually lies flat. Ciao friends, that's the Thimblehooks. Thanks for stopping by and today is a very special day. I am so excited to share with you how to make the perfect Tunisian circle, the Tunisian spiral that actually lies flat. I know that a lot of people in the world have done this little spiral and found that it's kind of bumpy and wavy and lumpy and it just doesn't look nice. So if you wanted to make a huge blanket, it ends up being kind of wonky looking. I'm going to show you all of the secrets and all of the tricks that you need in order to make this lie flat. It's not just one secret, there are several. Please remember that it really helps my channel when you watch the video all the way to the end. So let's get started. This is the one that I'm working on. I think this is beautiful. I love these colors. This one is, let me remember, this is Ferris wheel. Line run Ferris wheel, but I forget what color it was wild violets so it's just lots of different shades of purple this is a four weight and it wants a five millimeter hook what you want to go and get and it doesn't even have to be tunisian you want to get a six and a half six and a half millimeter which is also a k and an eight millimeter which is an l that's what you want ignore this label we don't care about the label for the tunisian spiral otherwise you get the puckers so I'm going to show you how to make it not pucker. I'm going to move this one aside and show you with the different yarn that's a little bit easier to see. Okay, this one I think is kind of ugly and I did that on purpose so we can see every round. This is all Karen Simply Soft, all kinds of different colors. I am going to show you today with Karen Simply Soft Persimmon, which also on its on its band suggests a 5 millimeter hook. So this will work exactly the same as the Ferris wheel. There are several secrets to making this lie flat and not having it pucker right here. You've seen that before. If you've tried this before and you got the puckers and then you frogged everything out and said, I'm never doing that again. That was a waste of time. I'm going to help you fix it right now. I hope you're enjoying my video and my channel. If so, please click that button to subscribe. Thanks. Right here is round one. I did every round in a different color so you can get the idea. It kind of looks like a, like a shell. And then we go around here with the white. Then we moved on to the, I believe this one's Pagoda. And then on to red. And then on to pistachio. Every one of these is its own round. So not only will you need these, you need some stitch markers. That is very special. You're going to need that. So we're going to set this guy aside over here a little bit so I can show you exactly what you need to be doing to make the perfect spiral. We're going to start with our six and a half and set the eight off for a little while, not for too long. So what we're going to do is a magic circle. That's how we're going to start, right in here. So magic circle, I have a really quick tutorial, a couple minutes long on that, if you wanted to check that out, but otherwise I'm going to show you right here. Make an X on this side of your fingers, flip, go under the front, grab the back, turn towards you, keep turning grab the other side and pull through. Now you have a magic circle. Easy peasy. In our magic circle we want to put 10 single crochets with our six and a half millimeter hook. So there we go. There's the first one. Get to stitch markers. You are not too cool for stitch markers, I promise. They help, especially when you're working in the round. Very important. So we want 10. And that was two Right, there's my 10 single crochets in my magic circle. Now we do the magic part. Pull on your tail and now it's closed. You pull it really tight and that will completely disappear. That was round one. Just those simple stitches are the gray part right here. We're going to move on to round two, which is all the white. But I am going to do that right here with the same color. So you can see what it looks like in a solid color and how they blend together. Because right here, obviously, there are some very obvious color breaks. It will not be as obvious if you use a single color. It will just kind of look like a seashell. It looks really, really cool. All of these stitches, I have 10 stitches. Each one is going to end up having three stitches in each single crochet. 
So how we want to start that is the very first one in our marked stitch. Go through and we're going to pull through and single crochet. And I'm going to move my stitch marker to that very first stitch. So there's my single crochet. Now I want to go through You'll be able to see this because I know that my editor is going to be able to pull this in nice and close. Go through this little part right here. Right here. It's not all the way down to our where we just made our stitch. We want to go through right in here. This first round is the trickiest and we want to pull through a loop. And we have two loops on our hook. Go back through that whole stitch and pull up a loop. So now we have three loops on our hook. Yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over and pull through two. And that was your very first increase. And if you've done any interlock, it seemed very familiar. So we want to do that again. We want to go through, now we have one of those vertical bars, just like we do when we're doing interlock. So under that, pull through, go back into that stitch. This is stitch number three. And pull through, three loops on our hook. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. And those were all worked into our very first single crochet out of our ten. And we're going to move on to the second one. Now we have our vertical bar right here. Go under the vertical bar, pull up a loop. Now we want to go under that little diagonal one again, just like we did on the very first stitch. Pull through, now we have three loops on our hook, and into our stitch. Now we have four loops on our hook, so we did another increase. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And do that again. The very first stitch will be your increase and the other two just follow along. So go under the vertical bar, yarn over, and pull up one. Under the next vertical bar, yarn over, pull up, three loops on our hook. Go back into that same stitch, yarn over, pull through, four loops on our hook, yarn over, pull through two, pull through two, and pull through two. We want to do that again. Go under one vertical bar, under the second vertical bar, and back into that same stitch. Four loops on our hook, yarn over, pull through two, pull through two, and pull through two. So that was our sixth stitch. So we're moving on to our next single crochet from our magic circle round. And we're going to do another increase. You always increase the first stitch. So go under the vertical bar, yarn over, pull through under the other vertical bar, yarn over, pull through, and then under this diagonal guy right here that we've been doing, that we did those other two times, yarn over, pull through, four loops on our hook, and now into our stitch. Five loops on our hook. Yarn over, pull through two, pull through two, pull through two, pull through two. Now the next two stitches, the next two passes that we do, we're going to go through this stitch, go under our vertical bars, one, two, and three, and then back into our original stitch, five loops on our hook. Yarn over, pull through two, pull through two, pull through two, pull through two. One more time because we need three stitches in that single crochet. Go under the bars, three bars here, and then into the stitch, five loops on our hook, one, two, three, and four. You can see it's fanning out and it's going pretty quickly. So we started here and it just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. We have to do one more increase. One more increase. We want to keep going. 
until we have six loops on our hook. And then that's enough, that's all the increases that we want. So we're going to go under the vertical bars, one, two, and three. And we need to increase one more time, so that means go underneath this little diagonal guy right here, like we did on the others. Pull up a loop, and then go through our stitch our single crochet from our magic circle. Now we have six loops on our hook and we are officially increased. Yarn over, pull through two all the way to the end. Two more times. No more increasing. So we're just doing, just it's just like an interlock. If you're familiar with that, this is easy peasy but you go underneath all of those vertical bars, get all those loops on your hook, and then go back into the original stitch, six loops on my hook, yarn over, pull through two, all the way down to the end. And one more time for that same stitch. So remember, each stitch is going to get three stitches. Each single crochet will get three stitches from this round. Oopsie and back in to our original single crochet. Yarn over, pull through two, all the way back down again. And now since we're done increasing, we're going to do the exact same thing with no increase, but we have to move to the next stitch. So we want to go under all of our vertical bars. One, two, three, and four. Move to the next single crochet right here. Yarn over, pull through, six loops on my hook. Yarn over, pull through two all the way to the end. And we want to do that three times for every single crochet that we have left from our magic circle. Under the bars. Oopsie under the bars, back in our original stitch, and one more time in that stitch. Under the four vertical bars, plus into our single crochet, six loops on our hook, yarn over, pull through two all the way back. And that was our next stitch. There's three, three Tunisians in there. I'm going to move on to the next. Do all of the exact same thing. Three of these in each stitch all the way back to our stitch marker. And I will meet you right here in just a minute. And here is my last stitch for round two. And pull through two, 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 two and two. Now you can see it does look a little bit puffy. This is another one of the tips, one of my secrets. Don't panic if it's still poofy, because it might be a little bit poofy. It's not very big yet, so it doesn't have a lot of weight. It's just not all stretched out yet, and you know that these stitches are going to stretch. So what we did, we just finished the part that's in white. And the reason that I'm using stitch markers is so you know when to change over to your next increases. And that also is going to be a huge piece of how this stays flat and doesn't get all puffy. You have to know exactly where you are at all times so you know when to start the next increase. There's this piece right here. This was our original 10 single crochets. Then we did three stitches into each one with our increases to here, but three stitches in each. For the next round, we're going to do two stitches in each. So I'm going to show you that little bit. And the reason that I marked it is because this one is all but disappeared. This is why I use this is why I use stitch markers because this is very hard to find, very hard to see, very easily could jump over to this other stitch. But this one is important because this is where we're going to start. That's our starting point for round three. And also at round three is so special is it's time to take the six and a half and put it away and get out your eight. 
that's going to help loosen up these stitches a little bit. So everything will lie nice and flat. That's the important part. All right, so now I've got my eight and I'm going to start working on round three. So it's the same as we were doing with round two under each bar, of course. Under each one of our vertical bars. It's a little bit tighter right now because I just moved from a six and a half to an eight. So I have five loops on my hook and then I want to go into this stitch that's marked with my blue marker. That's my last pull up. Six loops on my hook. Yarn over, pull through. All the way to the end. And mark that stitch. That is our very first stitch of round three. So that was right here. Starting with our blue. Or the pagoda, the turquoise or whatever you want to call that one. So like I said, round three, every stitch gets two of these Tunisian pieces. So that means we're going to go back into that same stitch that was marked with blue for our last pull up. Yarn over, pull through two, all the way to the end. And those are the two stitches that we need in this marked stitch. So what we're doing is we did from here, this was 10, we increased with three in each one, we increased up to 30, now we're going to increase again with two in each one up to 60. So we'll move on to the next. We're going to go under each vertical bar, there are four of them. Plus, move into the next stitch, which is right here. Six loops on my hook. Yarn over, pull through two, pull through two, pull through two, all the way to the end, just like we did before. Twice in every stitch. And don't worry about pulling any of these super tight, because that's what gets you your poof. That's why we're working with an eight. We want these stitches to be kind of loose. And there's our second one in this stitch. And move on to the next stitch with two Tunisians. There's our first one. Going into the next stitch. Two. There two. 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 And two. And one more time in that stitch. And repeat for the next stitch all the way around. All the way back to your stitch marker. I will meet you there in a couple of minutes. Alright, so instead of making that one go all the way around, because it is a little bit time consuming to do such large stitches, I have this gray one, my silver one that I was already working on, and you can see, yes, it's still too poofy. Don't panic. Do not pull this apart. It will be fine. I've done this a zillion times. I promise. Do a few more rounds and it will end up being as gorgeous as this one. I promise. Don't panic. Don't think you're doing anything wrong because you're not. This is exactly the way it's supposed to be. In order to get it to lie flat, you need to have the base. This base is nice and solid with our six and a half. And then everything else is using an eight to give it a little bit of a little bit of wiggle room in there. So it's not all bunched up. But that was round three. We just finished this part. And this is why you want your stitch markers. So now you know when to start the next increase. This round was 10 sing single crochets. In each single crochet, we did our increases here, but in each one was three, so we went up to 30. In each one here was two. So now what do you think this one's going to be? If you know how to increase circles in just a normal crochet, this one is going to be two Tunisians and then one Tunisian. Two, one. Two, one, two, one. 
So you're not doing three in each, two in each. Now this is every other. This one is two, one, two, one, two, one. All the way around. So you'll be increasing from 60 right here up to 90 stitches. So every other one will be an increase. In this round, you'll be able to figure out the pattern, I'm sure. It's pretty simple. It's just like the same the same math for increasing a normal circle. This one will be every third. So single. So there's one Tunisian, two, one Tunisian, and then here's an increase of two in the same stitch. So hopefully we can see this. There's two in everything here, three in everything here, two in everything here. This one was every other. So there's two, one, two, one. This one is one, one, increase of two in the same stitch. One, one, two, one, one, two. So the next round would be three singles and an increase. The next round would be four singles and an increase. And you just keep going and going and going until it's as big as you want. And it looks like this, which is lying beautifully. We have a nice solid base right here with our six and a half right in here. Nice sturdy base and then after that we moved up with an eight. Move up with your eight right here. This is very important. But now it's looking very flat and very lovely. So I worked this one all the way out to I believe it was an increase at seven. So there was one, two, three, four, five, six and there's my increase. That's how fast this can move. And I like, when I get way up here like this, I like to mark the first stitch that I did after my increase so I don't have to try to find these stitches. So there's my increase. There's two in one stitch right here. So I marked this one. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six. And there was my increase. That's how large I've gotten this one out. I'm working. This one just finished 240 stitches all the way around. So, of course, my next round would be seven Tunisians and in between the increases. A recap of the secrets to making sure that your Tunisian spiral actually lies flat so you can have a big throw. Number one, we're going to go up to a six and a half and an eight for your four weight yarn. The first round and the second round are with a six and a half. Everything else is going to be used with an eight. Use your stitch markers. They are your friend so you know where your next round begins and where your new increase sequence begins. That's very important. When you're on round three and it's still poofy like this one is, don't, don't panic. panic. Do not undo this. This is the way it will look. Just need to make it a little bit bigger and then it will lie flat. Those are the secrets. So I'm sure you've gotten this far and went, this looks terrible. This is the way it will look until it's a little bit bigger and then everything will work out. All right, so now I'm going to show you how to finish this off. You don't want to end it like that. It looks too, it's too obvious. But since we have so many stitches here, we have to decrease a little bit at a time or it won't it won't look right. So I got the rest of my Ferris wheel. Remember this was a four weight with a suggested five hook so I'm still using my eight. So what we want to do is use the same rules that you were using for your round. Like when we increased at the very beginning we did the very first stitch was the increase. When we're decreasing, the very first stitch is going to be the decrease. So here is a decrease. I'm at the end of my round nine, which is six Tunisians in between my increases. Now I have to follow the rules for the next round. Follow the rules for the round that you're on. So we're going to go under all of our vertical bars like normal. And into our marked stitch. Yarn over, pull through two until you have three loops still on your hook. 
instead of two loops on your hook, now you have three. This is how you decrease. Yarn over, pull through all three. So one of our vertical bars just disappeared. It got pulled up to the top right here. So we want to go again. No decrease this time. We have to follow the same rules. So we're going to the next one. Pull through two, pull through two, pull through two, pull through two. Now I want to put a mark on this one. This was my first decrease. All right, so you follow the rules for the round that you're on, just like if you were increasing or just working on it in normal, but the very first one is a decrease. So we decreased here. Now the other six just follow along. going under every vertical bar that's available. So remember we reduced, so one of those vertical bars is gone now. And we jump over to the next one. So we have five loops on our hook. One, two, three, four. So there was our third one already. Our very first one was the decrease, then we did two here. We want a total of seven. And this goes really fast when you're decreasing. Even if you're on a huge row and this thing is a king size spiral, it still goes pretty darn fast. And here is my last one before an increase. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I want to do exactly this going under this where we only have five loops on our hook. So following the same rules, I have to put two stitches in the stitch. So we go under our vertical bars. One, two, three, and into the next stitch with five loops on our hook. Remember, because we got rid of one of those vertical bars a while back. So this one is just one stitch shorter. We want two in that same stitch. Because we don't want this very last round to pucker, we have to follow the same rules. One, two, three, and four. All right, there's our first grouping for round 10, but we are starting to make the finish off that's going to be like that. So for the next one, following my rules again. So here's our vertical bars. I only have three of them there, so four loops on my hook. Go into the next stitch, yarn over and pull through two until you have three loops left on your hook. And there we are. Yarn over, pull through all three. And now you want to do the other six for this particular round that I am on. And I should have moved, I should have marked that one. This was my decrease. Right there, there's my decrease. It'll just take me a second to get the rest of these done. And I imagine you can figure out what the pattern is here our sequence 
for this round that I'm on is seven Tunisians in between the increase of two in the same stitch. So I have to do that same rule. Let's see how quickly this can go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm already at seven. So now the next stitch will get two Tunisians in it. So it stays with the same sequence for what this round should be. Two in the same, just like that. But you can see it's starting to get shorter. But we're doing it gradually so it doesn't just go you don't want it to just fall off, then it's noticeable. But we're almost done with our finish off here. So we're going to go under our vertical bars again. And do our next stitch. We have four loops in our hook. Yarn over, pull through two. I have three loops in my hook. Yarn over, pull through all three. And I mark that stitch again. I want to go under and in the next one, yarn over, pull through two, pull through two. So we have seven in between those increases that are going around in the circle. So we're actually increasing and decreasing at the same time, which doesn't make sense. But we are increasing as we go around the circle so it doesn't pucker because we want to make sure that this continues to be, continues to flare out like this and doesn't just bunch up right here in our very last row. All this work, you don't want to have it bunch up. So we're just following the rules for the round that we're on, just like if we were going to keep right on going. If I wanted to make it a big, great big king size blanket, you just keep right on going and going. Right, so I did my one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then two in the same stitch to follow our sequence around for the circle. And now we're going to decrease one more time of our height under the vertical bar, yarn over, pull through, into the next stitch. And now I have three loops on my hook. And our rule is when we get three loops on our hook, that's when we yarn over, pull through all three. So that's what we're going to do. And that's what we just did. So now that was number one. So now all we have is single crochets. One. Because there's only one loop on my hook. So it's just a single crochet. One, two, three, four, five, six. One more. Two singles right here. And then I like to end it with a slip stitch. So there's one. I got one more marker. I do. So there's my first slip stitch. One, two, three, not too tight. Four, five, six, and number seven. So this is what we all, all everything that we just did together right here. Here was normal sizing. I'm on round uh, 10, so there were seven Tunisians in between my increases. That was starting starting at my pink one right here with my blue right here. Right, so what we were doing is we were decreasing height, but we were increasing as we went around the circle. So hopefully that makes sense. Because we want this to still be our circle, we just want this to just to be shorter. So we decreased one here and followed the same rules for the round that you're on. Decrease one here, 
when you get to the last three loops on your hook you pull through all three because that gets rid of one of your vertical bars then you follow the rules part of the circle that you're on we decreased again decreased again and then I ended up with just single crochets because that's only we only had one only had one loop on our hook and then I like to end with a little bit of slip stitch just because I think it looks nice if you want to go all the way around with a slip stitch fantastic if you want to keep going until you find a color match which might be a while like if I want to do that I'd have to go way over here or if you want to skip the the slip stitches all together that's fine too because you can see they do show a little bit differently so I'll just show you without So that would be ending with a single crochet and then you just finish off the stitch any way you want to and you don't have any slip stitches showing. So there you go. Hopefully this is all making sense. We're decreasing height but not the circumference. We have to still increase that. So that's the part that gets confusing to people I think is that you're still increasing but you're also decreasing at the same time but you're de decreasing in the different direction. So there you go. You can keep going and going and going until you run out of yarn. Just leave yourself enough space, enough yarn left to do this. Which you saw how quickly that went. Just leave yourself enough yarn to make sure you can finish off properly. But this, I still have two skeins of this left and I'm going to make a big old throw that I'm really excited about having this throw. It's so soft and it's so pretty and I love these purples. Isn't that great? So thanks for stopping by. Thank you for supporting my small business. Please subscribe to Thimblehooks and stop back soon. Thanks. Bye.